Hello bookworms, it's Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to talk about my most surprising and disappointing reads from 2019. my next video in my year wrap up series for 2019. I always look forward to doing this video because while a lot of times my most surprising and disappointing books have some overlap with my best and worst books of the year videos, it also gives me a chance to talk about some three and four star books that I didn't cover in those videos. I have a ton of books to talk about in today's video. The ones that I've already talked more about in other videos I will keep really short, but like I said there's also a number of books that I haven't talked about in my year wrap up series yet. Okay let's start with my most disappointing reads of the year and then we can talk Talk about my surprising reads so that we can end on a happy note. Five of the books that I found disappointing last year are ones that I've already talked about. They're books that I gave two stars and I talked about them in my worst books of the year video. First I have Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. I gave this one two stars and it was disappointing to me just because it had been really hyped up by a lot of people in the book community. A lot of people really love this book so I'm definitely an unpopular opinion when it comes to Cabin at the End of the World. But because I had higher expectations going into it based on the things that I had heard, I was really disappointed when I didn't enjoy it and I only gave it two stars. I also have Wilder Girls, which also got two stars. And again, this one was just one that I had heard a lot of good things about. Although it was a debut from a new author, so I probably shouldn't have had such high expectations going into it. But it's just one that a lot of people had really enjoyed. And again, it's another one that I'm a bit of an unpopular opinion. There's a few of those on this list. There was also the seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This book had been on a lot of people's best of 2018 list and so I had some higher expectations going into it and while there were a lot of interesting things happening in the book overall it was just a miss for me and I gave this one two stars. Another unpopular opinion. I also found I Am a Legend by Richard Matheson to be really disappointing. I had really high hopes for this book because I really enjoy post-apocalyptic like zombie vampire books and while this is a classic and I don't usually read classics I had heard it was an easier read compared to a lot of other classics which I did find to be true. I just didn't like the story which I wasn't expecting. I did really enjoy the movie with Will Smith and I knew that they were gonna be different but because I enjoyed the movie with Will Smith I thought I would enjoy the book and that proved not to be true. <laughs> I also found Hex by Thomas Old Huvelt to be really disappointing. I had bought this book on a Kindle e-sale because I had heard a lot of good things about it from the horror community. It's talked about as being like different and fresh compared to other things in horror and while I totally agree with that assessment I still didn't enjoy it and found it disappointing. Okay those are all the ones that I have already talked about in my worst books of the year video so if you want more in-depth thoughts on why they were disappointing or why I didn't like them you can definitely check out that video. I've got four more books that I gave three stars last year that I found to be disappointing. So these are books that I had some pretty middle of the road feelings about but for whatever reason I found them disappointing. They just did live up to the expectation I had going into them. So first I want to talk about Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is an adult urban fantasy book that has a lot of Navajo and Native American inspirations in the world building and I thought I was really going to enjoy this because I had heard good things about it from multiple people that I follow and the premise is so interesting. It takes the Navajo or Native American like religion where some of those gods are real and sets it in a post-apocalyptic setting where there have been worldwide floods and the society of the U.S. has like completely changed because of this. I thought that setting sounded really interesting and I was really excited to see some of those Native American inspirations but overall I didn't enjoy the story as much as I had hoped. Some of the things that I didn't enjoy about that book was just like the characters and their interactions with each other and a little bit of the writing style I think didn't work for me. Another book that I found disappointing was The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. This is an adult or sometimes sold as YA World War II historical fiction book and I love World War II historical fiction. Going into this one I'd heard a lot of good things about it and it was supposed to be interesting because it's told from the perspective of a child. The title, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, is referring to how the main character in this book, who is like five years old, has a friend that lives on the other side of the fence that wears striped pajamas. And that child is a Jewish child in a concentration camp. 
And so the whole idea is that you're seeing things from the perspective of a young child. And I thought that would be really interesting. And it was interesting, but it was definitely not the kind of story that I enjoy reading. One of my biggest issues with the book was the perspective of the young child. The main character, like I said, is five or six. And then he has an older sister who's like seven or eight. But for some reason, those characters read to me as more of like a three and a five year old. I just felt like the way they were written was at a much younger age than the age that they were supposed to be at. And the main character is, you know, very naive about things, which I understand that like a five or a six year old, you know, wouldn't necessarily understand everything that's going on around them. But I just felt like they were way dumber than they should have been. And it really impeded in my enjoyment of the story. And I also just really did not like how the book ended. I know that there's a movie for this book. I'm still interested in seeing the movie, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. I also have both The Orphan Queen and The Mirror King, which is a duology by Jody Meadows. I gave the first book in this duology three stars and I gave the second book in the duology two stars. So I did talk about the second book in my worst books of the year. I was disappointed by this duology because I'd heard good things about it going in and I had read some Jodi Meadows previously, some of which I found kind of middle of the road and some of which I had enjoyed. And the premise of this series sounded really interesting and that is actually one of the things that I enjoyed about the book. It's a YA high fantasy and it's set in a world where magic has been outlawed because they think that anytime you use this magic it's creating this other evil force. But I just had a really hard time with the characters in the story. The main character I didn't really like very much. I didn't agree or understand some of the choices that she made or the way she treated people. I did really like the love interest and that was one of the reasons why I read the second book was because I wanted to see what was going to happen with the love interest. But by the end of the duology, I regretted that decision and it was not worth it for me to read that second book. I do hope to read more Jodi Meadows in the future. Her most recent series has dragons in it and I read the first book in that series and I have enjoyed it, but I haven't continued yet because it was an uncomplete series, but is now complete. So hopefully in the next year or two, I will get back to reading that series and maybe I'll enjoy it more than I enjoyed this duology. And then the last disappointing book I wanna talk about is The Blinding Knife by Brent Weeks. This is the second book in the Lightbringer series and I gave this one at three stars. It's an adult high fantasy with a really cool magic system involving colors. And the reason why this one was disappointing was because I really enjoyed the first book. I gave that one four stars and I was expecting to have another four star book as the second book in the series. But for this one I ended up having a lot of issues with it. Some of it having to do with the way female characters acted or were treated in the book and some of it had to do with the plot developments that I just thought were dumb and I didn't like them and those things really impeded in my enjoyment of the book and I only gave it three stars. There were definitely things that I enjoyed about it. Brent Weeks is really good at his endings and giving you new reveals and cliffhangers at the end of books that make you want to keep reading, which is why I have continued the series. And the next one I did give four stars, so it did get a little bit better. But yeah, I found The Blinding Knife disappointing based on the expectations I had of it going into it from enjoying the first book. Okay, moving on to surprising reads. I'm gonna start out with the ones that I've already talked about and just be really brief about them. So the first one from that list is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This was, as you guys know, one of my favorite books of last year. And it surprised me because I had never read any Samantha Shannon. And I had been hearing some good buzz about it, but I read it pretty early after it had come out. So I didn't have a whole lot of reviews to base it on. So I went into it with a pretty open mind and it totally blew me out of the water with how how much I enjoyed it. I just, I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. I also have The Ruins by Scott Smith. I had been hearing some things about this book in the horror community, but I had never read the author before and I hadn't heard enough about it to really know that I was going to enjoy it. And I loved this book so much. It was so fun. I could hardly put it down. I mostly listened to it and I finished it in the span of a few days, which is really fast for me. I'm kind of a slow and steady sort of reader. So that one definitely took me by surprise. I also have And the Trees Crept In by Don Kurtigich. This is a YA horror book that I went into with an open mind, but I had kind of heard mixed things about it. 
some people really enjoyed it and some people didn't really enjoy it. I'd heard mixed things about the ending, which now that I've read it, I can see that the ending could be really polarizing. So I wasn't really sure what I was going to get out of this book, especially because I had never read any Don Kurtigich before. But man, did I love this book, especially on audiobook. And definitely go check out my best books of the year if you want more thoughts on it. I also have the Gemina and Obsidio books, which were the second and third book in the Luminae Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I gave both of these five stars and that surprised me because while I was expecting these books to be fun. I definitely was thinking they would be four star books, which is what I gave the first book in the series. I just remember in the first book in the series, I had a hard time kind of connecting with the characters. I found some of their banter like a little annoying. And so I was kind of expecting that to be the same for the next two books, but it totally wasn't. And I did listen to the audiobook as well as read along for these two, which I didn't do for the first book. And I don't know if maybe that really enhanced my experience and made all the difference or what. But in these two books, I really connected with the characters and the last one especially emotionally got to me and I love them so much. There's also Sorcery of Thorns, which I've talked about so many times already, I feel like, but this is a YA fantasy book that I absolutely enjoyed. I had read An Enchantment of Ravens, which is Margaret Rogerson's first book. And while I enjoyed it and I gave it a solid four stars, that's what I was expecting out of this next book that she wrote, a solid four stars, but it totally surprised me by becoming one of my favorite books from last year. Then we also have Nosferatu by Joe Hill, which again, I've already talked about in my best books of the year video because this was so good. I honestly didn't have many expectations going into this book. I knew a little bit about the plot, but I was like really hesitant because Joe Hill is the son of Stephen King. And I just, I wasn't sure how much of his popularity had to do with that over how good of a writer he actually is. And I was very pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed this book. Okay, let's move on to books that I haven't talked about before. First, I have The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. I gave this one five stars and I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I'd never read any Lauren James before and so I had no prior experience to really base my expectations on. And I'd heard some good things about it, but like not enough for me to have known going into it that I was gonna love it as much as I did. I did listen to this mostly on audiobook and I just remember like actually doing extra chores around the house so that I could listen to this book because I could not put it down. It's a YA sci-fi with a bit of a thriller twist to it. And I think I'm just learning that that sci-fi thrillers are like some of my favorite types of thrillers. I just remember while listening to this book at towards the end, like the tension being so high and I just could not wait to find out what was gonna happen at the end. Another book that I gave five stars last year, but it didn't make it into my top 10 books is Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. This is an adult historical fiction book and it's about this like scandal that happened in real life. It's about the Tennessee children's home and how this woman there was basically kidnapping kids from really poor families and then putting them up for adoption to really rich families. And the story is crazy and I can't believe it was based on something that really happened and really happened not that long ago either. So the book was really eye-opening but even on top of that the characters were so well written. I emotionally connected with them. I really enjoyed the historical storyline more than the present day storyline because like a lot of historical fiction novels there are two timelines. But I still really enjoyed the present day too. I just thought the story was fascinating and it definitely left an impact on me. I remember when I was making my top 10 books of the year list, I really wanted to include this, but it just didn't quite make it in there. Another book that surprised me last year was Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, which I also gave five stars, but it didn't make it into my top 10. I had heard a lot of buzz about Riley Sager, but I just hadn't read any Riley Sager myself. And so I didn't have any expectations going in. And I ended up finding this book so fun and I'm definitely reading more Riley Sager because of it. You know thrillers can be really hard they can be really hit or miss for people and so anytime I find a thriller that I enjoyed enough to give five stars it's always a surprise unless it's an author that I've read before. So along those lines I also have The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware which I also gave five stars. This is just another thriller that I 
wasn't sure what I was gonna think of going into it and I ended up loving it so much. I had definitely heard a lot about Ruth Ware's books. Some good, some not so good. Like I've heard a lot of mixed things about some of her prior books and I read Turn of the Key not too long after it had come out so I didn't have a whole lot of other reviews to base it on but uh, people did seem to be enjoying it which made me excited to pick it up but it still surprised me with how much I enjoyed the story. Okay and then the last five star book that I want to talk about I have two more that I gave four stars. But the last five star book is Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. This one didn't make my best books of the year simply because it was technically a reread. I had read this book like 10 years ago, but I didn't remember anything about it. The first two books in this trilogy on my most recent read of them, I had given them both four stars. So I went into the last one thinking I would also give it four stars. I thought it was going to be a solid book that I enjoyed but I didn't think I was gonna love it as much as I did. This last book put me in a bit of a book hangover and I cried so much at the end of this book. I could not stop thinking about these characters for like a week after I'd read it, probably longer than that. I just found the ending to be really haunting and it was very bittersweet. There were some things that were happy at the end but it, there were a lot of things that were not happy and I just my heart broke for these characters so much and I just love this book so much more more than I thought I was going to when I picked it up. Okay guys, two more books until I'm done. I told you I had a lot of things that surprised and disappointed me. So the next two books are books that I gave four stars, but they were definitely more like four and a halfs that were rounded down to four because they just weren't quite at a five star level for me. Interestingly enough, they're both science fiction books. So the first one is Planet Fall by Emma Newman. This is an adult science fiction book. It is the first in a series. And I had heard good things about Emma Newman, but not from like a ton of people. I do think that her books are a little underhyped. I mean, I've only read one, so I don't have a lot to base that on. But I found this book fascinating. It's set on a different planet that humans have gone to to try and populate. And there's some really interesting ideas explored in this book. The main reason why it didn't get a five star from me was the ending. It was a little bit weirder than I was on board for. But I remember while I was reading this, I could hardly put it down. I enjoyed it so much. And it was a surprise because I haven't heard that many people talking about her books and I'd never read one before. I am very much looking forward to reading more Emma Newman in the future. Okay, and then the last book that I'm gonna talk about in today's video is The Expanse by James S.A. Corey. Now, I had heard a lot of people saying good things about this book, but I was a little unsure going into it because I had actually started the TV show. I'd watched two or three episodes of the TV show and I didn't like it very much. Like it was just okay, but not enough that I wanted to continue on watching. But I really wanted to give the books a chance because I had heard such good things about them. This book is really plot driven and has some really interesting things going on. I really enjoyed the two like main storylines we were following and like trying to figure out how they were going to connect to each other. The main reason why I didn't give this book five stars is again the ending was just a little bit weirder than I would have liked and I ended up not like loving it to a five star level. But yeah I wasn't really sure what I was gonna think of it going in because of my not so great experience with the show and the fact that I enjoyed it as much as I did was definitely a surprise. I do still plan on revisiting visiting the show now that I have enjoyed the first book. I want to read the second book I think before I start the show because of the way the timeline and the show matches up with the timeline in the books. Anyways those are all of the books that I found surprising or disappointing in the year of 2019. I know that was a lot of books to talk about but I tried to keep my thoughts concise. <laughs> we'll see if that actually happened in editing. If you have read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them down in the comment section or let me know what some of your surprising and disappointing books of 2019 were. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching and until next time bookworms, keep reading. Bye.